uh, you know, I know Jackson didn't have the best shooting game the other night, but he did have three assists. And you, you talked the other day about he's kind of been coming on. He's going back to where he, you know, played last year. Kind of, what do you, th- how do you feel about him going back there? And just, do you feel like he's still making good progress, even though he didn't shoot real well the other night? Yeah, I mean, I think as we look, you know, into the rest of our schedule, uh, Bob, and as we look into uh, the future, you know, he's our youngest player on our roster. Love the fact that he's getting game experience. I think he's becoming more and more comfortable. You know, uh, at Mississippi State, it was his seven rebounds. Last game, it was his ability to find open teammates with three assists. Um, you know, he's shooting the ball, um, you know, pretty good. We, you know, we feel like from a consistency standpoint, uh, he can shoot a little bit better, maybe draw some more free throws attempted because. You know, as you look at our ball club and you try to figure out, hey, what is, you know, what is your team's identity? Um, You know, playing with tempo, we're in the top 30 in the country in tempo, and then we're 10th in the country in free throws attempted. Um, You know, last year we were fifth in the country in free throws attempted, but we actually are averaging one more uh, free throw attempt this year than last year. And so we need Jackson to continue to, to have his game evolve to, kind of what our identity has been, which is attacking the rim as well. And I think he'll do that. He's, he's a guy that, you know, is watching film. He's a guy that's in the gym on his own, working on his game. So certainly, um, you know, his best basketball is ahead of him because of his attitude and his, and his willingness to get better. And and then, you know, he didn't get to play a whole lot last year. You know, I think he was sick and um, he's getting a lot more minutes now, but um, how did that recruiting go down? I know you recruited him out of high school, but then when he went to the portal, was he a guy you instantly said, yeah, we, we want him or kind of how did that, how, how did all that go down? Yeah, no, I, you know, I think that, you know, when, uh, and I've, I've said it before, I mean, you know, when he, when he went to Texas A&M, we kind of thought we were in a good spot with him. Um, he was on campus for a football game. Um, I think it was a football game on that on a Saturday. I know he was on campus um, on a Saturday and, and, uh, and then Tuesday, if I recall correctly, he committed to, to, uh, to Texas A&M and, and, uh, as a, as a young man, I really liked him. I liked the fact that, you know, his mom, um, was a great communicator that she played has, has a background of basketball that, you know, his mom's sister played in the WNBA. So I think that as a family, they understand the game, um, and, you know, he's just a, he's just a guy that is a, you know, he's a pleasure to be around. Um, and like I said, defensively, <clears throat> he continues to get better. I thought he did a really good job on Molinar. Um, and then if you look at who he was assigned to against Vanderbilt, um, right, that's the one guy that, you know, went three for 12. And, um, you know, Jackson's not known uh, necessarily as a defender, but I think he's buying into the system and he's trying to use his length. He needs to do a better job of getting through screens, um, which we've addressed with him, and we'll continue to teach him technique on that. But, um, you know, a lot of really bright spots um, with, with what Jackson's done, like, you know, like I said, not just from shooting, but, but a lot of different perspectives. You're obviously familiar with Ethan. I know he's not playing a ton, but he's playing a little bit more. I think he leads him in block shots. What are you seeing from Ethan and kind of what are you expecting from him playing, playing his old team? Although he doesn't know a lot of these guys, you know, some of them. Yeah, no, Ethan, you know, he does a great job of, of understanding his game. He's uh, he was a pleasure to coach, um, you know, a really nice young man uh, plays with energy, runs the floor really hard, really good shot blocker. Um, actually Texas a and is a great fit for him because they have, uh, you know, a lot of shooting, great three point shooting team. And that allows, um, you know, Ethan to play with space. So he, uh, you know, he's, he's found a really good spot for him, um, and a good system for him. Obviously, if, if he's out in front of his, his guy, he does a good job of rim running and he does a good job. Uh, as a trail man of setting drag screens and, and rolling hard to the rim and they'll throw some lobs to him um, when he's at that dunker spot. So he's, he's done a good, really good job for coach Williams. Yeah. Th- thanks Eric. I, I might have a couple more if, if time allows. Thank you. Nate. 
Yeah, Eric, just as far as uh, Amuye and uh, Tony and the progress they made this last game, what do you look for them this, this game, particularly, I guess, with Amuye and rebounding? Yeah, I mean, Stanley's got to defensive rebound the basketball. I mean, he had one defensive rebound. Uh, it was off a loose ball about 15 feet from the rim. Um, so we, you know, in this league, at the forward spot, whether it's a small forward or power forward spot, you've got to rebound the basketball. And so um, Adis, he's done a good job rebounding the ball at times, but we need him to be a very good defensive rebounder as well. Um, you know, and, 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 you know, Stan and Adisi, when they're scoring, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty good. Um, so I think from both those guys, especially, you know, they both have experience. Um, they both got to, you know, have, bring consistency on a nightly basis. So we kind of know what we're going to get from them. Um, I think that's, you know, part of our development as a group, but offensively when they're playing well, we're pretty good. And then we need both of them to be really good defensive rebounders. Adisa to get the start of the year is really one of your most consistent players. Kind of what happened to him and what do you think got his game back on track? Yeah, I don't I don't think it's necessarily even, you know, just right now. I think that consistency for a lot of young players um, becomes really important. And I, you know, I think, you know, you look at 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 his body of work in the past, there's been some consistency, you know, whether it's here or somewhere else playing. So he's that's just part of his evolving as a player, um, you know, is to, is to add consistency. I, you know, like shooting is going to come and go just like hitting does with the baseball player at times. But, but just, the, you know, knowing what you can kind of put in the box score from those other areas, running the floor hard, defensive blockouts, offensive rebounding, uh, doing your defensive assignment, all those things are what I'm talking about, you know, when we discuss both amongst our team and with, and with, you know, the media is, that's what, that's what we're looking for a consistency. You, you know, sometimes the shots come and go, but, but the consistency on those other areas are really important. Thank you. Coach. Yeah, coach, going back to Jackson, uh, we saw it a little bit earlier on the other side with Bebe and how he had a really big game against y'all. Is, is there something to play in your former team? Like, does it add extra motivation or what have you seen kind of in your career from that perspective? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I think that, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a team game, you know, and you, you know, Bebe stayed right in his box of what he does really well. And he killed us, you know, and, um, you know, I've looked at his box score since and he hasn't had as big a games. Um, so whether that was guys on our team, not understanding that Bebe could have a big game or not, I'm, I, you know, I, I'm not in the minds of, of guys, but Bebe killed us. He played great. Um, he texted me, hope, hoped I had a good New Year's and a good holidays, which was really nice of him. Um, he's probably really happy with how he kicked our butt um, and felt, you know, like he wanted to reach out and, and, and say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Um, so I don't, you know, I mean, I'm sure Jackson would love to have a big game. I'm sure Ethan would love to have a big game. Um, it's a little bit unique, obviously, in college basketball to have interconference transfers, but we're going to see it in football. We're going to see it in baseball. We see it in softball. Like, it's it's a new wave thing. Um, I mean, I can tell you in the NBA when somebody plays against their old team, there's a little extra motivation for sure. And I was looking at some of y'all's uh, Ken Palm numbers and y'all's the uh, last year defensively were one of the best teams in the country. And, and y'all are way down from that this year. Are you still kind of tinkering with things on the defensive side? Are you still kind of trying to figure things out or what do you think it is that, you know, led to that, you know, being lower than y'all were last year? Well, that's nice of you, Hutch, that, you, you know, you only went to last year because even, you know, two years ago, I've, I've said it a hundred times, we were, number one in the country in defending the three our teaching methods have not changed we've actually been doing more drills and teaching more um but it hasn't shown in the games you know and so um you know i'd i would love to tell you that we scrapped the way that we normally play 
and we've changed, but you know, we've, we've played man to man defense uh, for three years here at Arkansas. Right. And last game we did play uh, some two, three uh, matchup zone that, that luckily my sister kept some of my dad's playbooks and she knows how we've been defending and she FedExed them. And I went through some of the notes and we added a, a, a matchup zone that we ran the other night that actually was, was fairly effective um, in, in three possessions against Vanderbilt. It's not something that, that I want to rely on. Um, but to answer your questions, are you still tinkering? Yes, we are because um, we, you know, just like you looked at Ken Palm Hutch, we have three different, we, I actually got a video, an 11 and a half minute video from a stat service um, that normally they just send a package, but they actually verbalize the video for us um, as well. So yes, we understand our three point defense has not been good. Our three point attempt, just allowing attempts. Um, if I'm, Talking to you guys about it, I'm certainly addressing it with the team as well. Um, but sometimes habits are hard to break. And so that's what we have to continue to do is, you know, continue to uh, point it out on video, continue to point it out on our stat sheets that the guys get and continue to drill it. That's the only way that I know how uh, to do it. But, you know, certainly, you know, when you have a, you know, a guy like Tate, who's six foot seven and can cover a lot of ground at the point guard position, you know, um, but again, we're, we're tr trying to figure it out and tinker. So DC Tony guarded Pippen a lot of the second half. I thought he did a good job. Jackson Robinson, as I mentioned, had to guard um, Molinar. If you would have asked at the beginning of the year, if those two guys would have been assigned to primary defenders. Uh, I wouldn't have thought that they would be, but um, that's what we've come to. And those guys have done a good job at it. CJ. Hey coach, uh, Chris likes only played 10 minutes last game. Uh, didn't get too many quite opportunities last game with on three field goals attempted. I think two of those came in the last couple of minutes, but he played down the stretch. Does he get more opportunities in this Texas A&M game and um, get more time to shine on the court? Yeah, I mean, Chris has to, you know, he's got to help us defensively. Um, we see all these numbers. Chris is involved in, in some of our defensive things that have got to improve. And obviously at his size, he's got to bother people. And, and we need his percentages to go up. He's 37 percent from the, you know, from the field. And, um, you know, his three point percentages, those percentages have got to come up. Um, having said that, if you go back and watch the tape, uh, during the game, uh, Chris was absolutely incredible uh, with his buy-in on the bench and trying to cheer his teammates on. But Chris has gotten a lot of opportunities. And um, obviously, Jackson is now taking up some of the minutes. Um, Adisi went through a stretch where he wasn't playing a lot. And, and so, you know, we've got to find guys that are productive um, it's not about anybody shining. It's about going out, being productive, helping your team in all facets on both sides of the ball. And uh, Chris is work. You know, he's working to to try to improve his percentages as well. He's in the gym, and um, you know, but we're in a mode right now where we gotta we gotta try to. You know, I thought we made great strides. We lost the game, but but ball movement was better. There was defensive possessions that were better. Um, you know, we had three or four guys play some of their best games. And then we had some other guys not. And, and we need all, we need this entire roster uh, to play well in, in a 40-minute game in order for us to win. We, we're not a team um, that's just going to rely on one or two guys. And if they're playing well, they can carry us. Because obviously last year, you know, we, could, we knew what Justin was giving us every night. We knew what Moses was giving us every night. We knew what Tate would give us every night we need three or four guys that, that are steady across the board from a performance standpoint. And then somebody that has a hot night, that's just an added bonus. Curtis. Hey coach A&M is off to a pretty good start this year. What do those guys do well? And, and where do you think they'll challenge you the most Saturday? 
Yeah, so they, they play really, really hard. They're well coached. Coach Buzz Williams does a great job. Uh, I think he always does, even years that they haven't had um, maybe a great record. They're so well coached. I mean, I can, you know, the our years in year one and year two, we thought that they were as hard to play against as anybody, regardless of their record. Um, because of, because of the, the coaching that Buzz does. I think he's one of the best coaches in our league. Again, doesn't matter to me what, what place his team finished in. Um, they're hard to prepare for. They're a great three-point shooting team. Um, they have a way different identity this year than they have in the past. They're playing faster. They're shooting more threes. Um, you know, they're Wyoming transfer. Um, very, very, very good player. They found a really good player in the transfer market in him. Uh, their small forward is just a, a fierce competitor, a transfer from Virginia Tech. You know, so I, I, I like their team a lot. I really do. I, you know, um, I mentioned Williams, uh, Gordon's an, another guy that, so they kind of play two point guards. You know, Gordon was their point last year. Now he's playing a little bit more too. I mentioned Radford at the three. Um, Coleman, a transfer from Duke, does a really good job. He played very, very well. Uh, at Georgia the other night um, so yeah they got they got shooting and then they, and then you add in the fact that they play hard and they'll try to slow you down after made baskets with with a little bit of their um, you know zone three-quarter court press that's that's unique to to see a team press a little bit after a made basket and try to make you eat a little bit of clock um, you know after their made buckets Bob, wrap us up final question please Okay, uh, Eric, you know, you, you, you watch that Georgia game and they hit a last second three probably, you know, it was a little different. The guy dribbled up and he was on the other side. You guys missed the last second three. I mean, I guess I just, what does that tell you about, I guess, the margin of error in this league? And did you watch that team think, man, I wish we could have hit that shot or something? Or, you know, it just seems like it's so, the, the rays are thin sometimes. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, you know, there's, I mean, in league play all across, you know, the country, it's not just the SEC. I mean, it's, it's all conferences. You know, there's a lot, a lot of close games. And, um, you know, the, the thing that, you know, our locker room was hurting. I thought we responded uh, post game um, the way that you would want a team to after a loss, meaning that, you know, that they're hurt. Um, but it wasn't just J. I mean, JD shot. We've seen it over and over. He was he got as clean a look as you're going to get. He just missed the shot. And Chris likes. I think had made 32 or 33 straight free, uh, free throws, and and he misses a free throw after making 30 plus in a row. Um, and then he goes in and gets an offensive rebound and uh, stand on the left wing. I mean, he had a layup blocked. Um, so we had. We had six shots within like 45 seconds. I don't know, even in a pro game um, where there's a lot more possessions, I don't know in the last minute if I've seen so many opportunities that just came up a little bit short. Our defense the last minute and a half was pretty damn good. I mean, to think that we were down where we were and then we kept giving ourselves an opportunity. And obviously there were some missed free throws on their part. Um, you know, but we gave ourselves a chance to win um, you know, and we just, you know, the basketball gods sometimes, you know, it wasn't there for us that night, you know, and, and, uh, you know, you got to get yourself ready for, for another game against a team that, you know, they got a really good record and they've beaten some good teams. So, um, it's another really, really hard game, uh, you know, for sure. My apologies. I skipped over Scotty. Scotty, last question. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, Coach Jalen had two steals high out on the perimeter on Tuesday, and it's something he's done, I feel like, fairly regularly this year. Why do you think he's, you know, been able to have success doing that this year? Yeah, I mean, I think, like, in our pick-and-roll coverage, when we're, when we're a little bit more, um, you know, aggressive, uh, and he's got good hands, he's got good anticipation, Scotty. I mean, that's a great question because, um, to my knowledge, I think he's third on the team in steals. Um, he's got 15 and, and Devo has 16. And you think about, you know, the opportunities that a center has compared to a guard, 
a guard's got a lot more opportunities. You know, for instance, you look at J.D. Steels, and, and he's got 37. He's one of the highest steel players in the country. But, you know, J.D. has 37 or has doubled up Jalen only because of the fact that J.D.'s got more of an opportunity, meaning the person that J.D. is guarding and all of our guards, when you guard a guard, that player's dribbling more. So you have more of an opportunity and has the ball in his hands more. So not often do you see a center that has a high volume of steals because just because his man doesn't have the ball that often. So I think uh, you can attribute it to Jalen's basketball IQ, and you can also attribute it to him having high active hands and reading the offense as well. He has just real quick, just how valuable are those, you know, just in terms of him not allowing, you know, opposing teams to initiate their set sometimes or, you know, even reverse the ball if they do get into a set. Yeah, he's done a great job, um, Scotty, of what, you know, when we talk about owning the elbow, he's done a really good job of that. Entry passes going to the center, um, you know, and, and, you know, again, I think it's, it's just anticipation. It's understanding that your teammates are behind you. Uh, to give help if you gamble a little bit. I think all that stuff is, um, you know, it's the same thing with JD when he, when he goes for a gamble and um, you know, you got to make sure that, that you're taken care of on the backside and, and um, you know, certainly his steals are, are important to us for sure, because those are, those are extra possessions and they take away a possession for the opponent. You know, they're almost worth four points if you can convert at the other end. Okay, thanks, Coach. No, you Actually, the way we defend the three, they're probably worth five points, not four. Bet Online has you covered for all the holiday season. More props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all sports action. Head to our new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus with the promo code BELIEVE to receive your bonus. That's B L E A V to receive your bonus. And it's not just football. Bet Online has pro and college hoops. NHL, boxing, UFC, even your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all these amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports.